This week on the podcast, I'm talking to two experts about lighting and rigging for your worship experience. Let's do it. This is the definitive podcast for helping you plan, create, and execute dynamic worship experiences at your church. Useful, practical content in the areas of production, worship, communications, first impressions, and more. This is Making Sunday Happen. Hey, ministry leader, thanks so much for being here. Welcome to the podcast. I've been meeting a lot with you guys, production leads, executive pastors, lead pastors, creative directors at churches around the area, and uh, just meeting across the country with different ministry leaders. And a common theme that I continue to see is that you guys are overloaded, you're overwhelmed, Uh, You don't have enough team, especially in the creative space, to get everything done that you need to get done, especially with all the digital assets that you need, whether that is uh, graphics or video or even live production team, uh, things like that. Uh, I can certainly relate. I have been on staff at two large churches, uh, one in Mississippi, that I was the only video content creator. We had three or four campuses at the time that I was there, uh, and I was it. I was the only uh, video content creator. I was also the only uh, the the live production uh, director uh, at the main campus. And so I was responsible for the volunteer team at the main campus and then uh, and getting the, the sermon out to multi-site. And this is before Resi. This is before uh, a lot of the, the streaming technology was there. So we would actually record it, put it in a, a suitcase, in a drive, ride it across town, sync it up live, and then play it back Pretty crazy Uh, back in the day uh, what we had to do. You guys might can relate to that if you've been around a little while. Um, But I can relate to you as far as being the only only media guy, the only content creator, uh, or just having a a very small team uh, to deal with. Uh, And so um, uh, if you have that need, uh, if you need some additional help in the the creative uh, space, you might need an expert creative team. Uh, You want to trust a team that knows ministry. You want to trust a team that uh, can work with you to try to visually communicate the gospel. Uh, And your next step with our team may be going from using our pre-made, ready-made media content to custom media. And we can produce graphics and video content for you. In fact, we do about three to four times as much custom media as we do ready-made media. We have a lot of clients in the custom space uh, from very small churches doing uh, maybe a single project here and there or a big Christmas or Easter thing to very large ministries um, and everywhere in between. So we serve folks like Outreach and Awana and Answers in Genesis and Tithely uh, and others uh, that are large ministries, but we also serve small churches Uh, as well, and medium-sized churches. And so no matter where you are sitting, uh, if we can come alongside you and help you, we would love to do that. Uh, We can do uh, graphics and video for you. So sermon series design, logos and branding, print media, social graphics, sermon bumpers, promos, trailers, announcement videos, lyric videos, whatever you might need. Uh, Don't don't hear this as a sales pitch. Hear, Hear this more as if you need help. We, we can certainly help you. That's why I created uh, this company. Uh, that's why God called me to it in 2015 is to help uh, churches that are overwhelmed, that either have no creative team or their creative team is completely overwhelmed. So if we can help you, please let us know. 1230media.com slash contact uh, to reach out to our team. Again, 1230media.com slash contact. All right. Today on the show, I welcome two lighting and rigging experts. Uh, One is Griffin McCravey. Griffin is the broadcast lighting director at Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. I'll also welcome Brandon Creel. Brandon is a lighting and rigging expert 
I'm talking with both of these guys about lighting and rigging for your worship experience. And I recorded these interviews at SALT Conference. So be sure to sign up for SALT. My buddy Luke McElroy and his team do a great job there. So uh, if you are looking for a great conference to take your production and creative team to, this is the one uh, to go to SALT Conference. Uh, Be sure to Google it, look it up, register for it. Uh, It'll be great. All right, quick break, and we'll be right back. We'll do Griffin first and then Brandon. Here we go. Hey guys, Grant Murphy here from the 1230 team. Did you know that with our custom media services, you can build your own retainer with us for the year to help you save money? Let me explain. If you know that you may come to us for a lot more than a custom single project, we can help you put together a six or 12 month retainer to save your church or ministry up to 20% off your projects. We even have a calculator on our website to easily help you put together your annual needs. Go to 1230.media slash retainer. Choose your term for a six or a 12 month retainer. Then you can choose all the custom graphic and video needs that you may have for that period of time and easily see what your monthly cost would be. For example, if you know your church is going to do 10 sermon series in the next 12 months, you can select 10 sermon series designs, 10 sermon bumpers, and 10 series trailers with your 12 month discount. Your monthly rate will be $566 a month. Did you catch that? 10 full series graphics, bumpers, and trailers for your year for under $600. I would love to encourage you to check out some of our design and video samples on our website to see the quality of our work. Our team is off the charts good at what we do, and we have a huge heart for ministry and want to help you reach your community for Jesus. Start building your custom retainer today at 1230.media slash retainer. That's 1230.media slash retainer. Hey guys, I'm hanging out with Griffin McCravey from Church of the Highlands. Griffin, tell me uh, some of what you do. Just kind of give me your role there at Highlands. Yeah, so I am the broadcast lighting director at Church of the Highlands. So we are a multi-site campus, We've got uh, locations all over the state of Alabama. And so what we try to do is create a unique but uh, exceptional experience at all of our campuses. So we're trying to um, have a campus in different parts of the state where there's different cultures, different uh, you know congregations, that kind of thing. And so what we try to do is create a unique but um, similar experience across all of our locations. So I play a big part in the lighting side of that, both for on camera for um, the product that we send out over its uh, YouTube or the internet or our own platform, and then trying to also help speak into what that lighting experience looks like at the campuses, you know, when they're in a service and um, that kind of local expression of worship and kind of what that feels like. So walk me through your structure. Is it, so it's, it's Hodges in every location or is it campus pastors that preach live? Yeah. So uh, Pastor Chris Hodges, Hodges, our senior pastor, he, uh, he uh, sends a message message out uh, live every service um, and then we have local worship at each campus and then each campus has a campus pastor um, that's you know more of like I grew up in a super small Southern Baptist Church so the kind of the pastor that the participants see at each location that's the person they see each week person mm-hmm. they can talk with meet with things like that when Pastor Chris may not be available or they may be at a campus three four five hours away and so um, we broadcast that message to the campuses most Sundays we have a couple Sundays every year where the campus pastor will get a chance to speak people can kind of hear from mm-hmm. their local you know pastor so to speak mm-hmm. um, but yeah that's kind of our kind of our structure so is it uh, like wide center screen IMAG on the sides walk me through is it different every campus it's it's different um, we try to have a couple of um, we call them boxes that we have that are kind of easily deployable based off the size so the first thing we'll do is look at a city decide what size campus does it need does it need a 300 seat room when when we get to the point where we're going to build we normally start out portable so sometimes that kind of comes down to the size of the space available Mm -hmm. of whether it's a school gymnasium or whatever it may be Um, but when it's time for us to build we'll look at first size so do we need a three four hundred seat room do we need a five six hundred seat room or do we need um, our largest uh, campuses outside of our main location are about a thousand to twelve hundred seats somewhere in that range and so um, how many campuses now 22 Okay. 22. And mm. so um, combination of portable and permanent. 
um, permanent being buildings we either built or renovated a building we purchased. Um, and so uh, we have a couple different models. One is a triple wide, that would be our bigger rooms. Um, in this world of technology, we're actually in the process of moving them to LED. Right. Um, it's you know easier maintenance long term. <clears throat> it can be more you know cost upfront, but there's less you kind of have to do in the long run. So no are you feeling else. that? Are you feeling um, LED everywhere as yeah, opposed to projector? Yeah, I, as the lighting guy in me, LED walls are hard to compete with sometimes. Right, so right. I'd almost rather it stay projector right. selfishly. Um, but yeah. yeah, so we're kind of a triple wide slash uh, ban uh, triple wide banner slash LED model okay. then we have like a center screen 16 okay. by 9 model and then some of our smallest locations have even just a couple of TVs on stage we have a, a campus in the Auburn area which is wow. south of Birmingham they actually meet in the Auburn Hotel and Auburn's a big um, uh, college town and so we actually have a building in that city that we built and had to launch a second location just because of the amount of people coming wow. every week so that second location is kind of an interesting vibe so what is fun is from location to location, they all speak Highlands, the walls, the experience, it all speaks Highlands, but there's also kinds of uh, different culture in some of the different cities, which is fun to see for somebody like me who can travel some to the different locations mm -hmm. and kind of see what the different ones feel like. So are you responsible, obviously you're responsible for lighting at the main campus and how that translates to the screen at the other uh, locations. Right. Are you also responsible for the lighting in, in all of the locations as well? So on a normal Sunday, myself or one other LD, we're the guys running the main campus. Um, and then we're very volunteer based. So we have volunteers running most all of our other rooms. Um, one of the visions from Pastor Chris, uh, he's actually, he thinks a lot about production, believe it or not. And so one of his big things is um, he likes to make sure that it's an excellent experience that's comfortable, that's similar everywhere. So that like, whether you walk in Highlands Oxford or mm. Highlands Mobile Bay, it's Highlands either way. And so uh, we're not physically on the consoles as staff at the locations on a Sunday, um, but we're sending out, we call them look sheets, but it's basically just a, um, to dumb it down, it's literally just basically a three or four song look sheet of, hey, we're gonna do this piece of content, we're gonna do these colors with it, and then effects, things like that, they kind of do based off their location. And you know, some congregations are a little bit of an older congregation, some congregations are a little bit of a younger congregation. They kind of are able to feel that out based off of their area. If so I was going to ask you that. So you, you've mentioned a couple of times that they feel highlands everywhere you go. What does that mean practically? Yeah, so for us, it's kind of a funny analogy, but Pastor Chris always uses the analogy of like, we're from the South, so Ruth Chris is like our like big steakhouse, our like fancy steakhouse. Right. And so he always gives the example of like a Ruth's Chris. There's locations all over the place, but whenever you go in one, you know the food's going to be good, it's going to be quick, it's going to be hot. Mm -hmm. So in the same kind of way, like whether we're in a space that we own or a smelly school gym, we're thinking of everything down to sense. How well lit is it? How easy is it to find information, you know, banner on the walls, things like that. How easy is it to know how to get to the auditorium, even if we're in some school gym? And so um, we really just try to make it easy and make it a uh, safe experience where people are able to come in from all walks of life having in the South, we've got people who have never been to church. We've got people who have gone to the same church for 60 years and sat in the same pew seat. So right. it's really a wide range of people we're trying to make feel comfortable and feel at home. And so our kind of slogan is welcome home. So the feel we want to try to create for people is like no matter what location you're at, you just feel comfortable. Good. All right. So you're really passionate about lighting for broadcast. So let's define those terms. What is broadcast? Do you actually mean TV? or do you mean online spaces, both? Yeah. Define that so for, for us, we actually haven't reached a TV platform. Um, back in the day when Highlands was first getting going, they looked at cable for a couple of years, but um, we use High Vision, which I'm sure a lot of churches out there probably use. Um, so we use that to stream to our own platform on our website. We have an app, and then we also do YouTube. We used to do Facebook, but in the world of Facebook and Facebook comments, um, we, <laughs> again, in the world of trying to fill Highlands, we wanted there to be a safe place where people could go and experience church. And so this is probably not a shocker, but Facebook comments can get a little wild in the middle of a service. What? So yeah, yeah, it's a surprise to everybody. So we actually ended up pulling back from Facebook a couple of months ago after a lot of thought and deliberation on it, um, just deciding that we wanted to make sure we could try to create that safe space for people. Um, so yeah. And it's on your website, so you can control. Yes. 
everything right. about it. Yeah. All right. So what are some things that you do specifically for lighting that translates and maybe talk to the churches that, you know, have uh, that struggle with this yeah. struggle with it just doesn't look the same in my room as it does online. Right. Walk me through how you guys have gotten there and elevated that. Yeah. Well, I would say first thing is, um, communicate well with your video teams. Like I know when I first came on the team, it was almost like a little bit of a lighting team, video team, like headbutting situation. And it doesn't have to be, we're all trying to accomplish the same vision of get our message out and make it well seen and easy to understand. And so the, the biggest first thing I would say is just like, know your video guys well, like I, just be friends with your video director. I know that sounds crazy and hopefully all of you are friends with everyone you work with, but it's not always that easy and people have different personalities. So I would say first, know your video team well. Um, secondly, um, and this is a big thing for us, so you know it might not be for a church out there, but we want everyone to be seen well. So um, I would probably dare to say that even some of our attendees in our services would feel like the service is a little like cut and dry, like bright lights all the time, um, that sort of thing. The in-room, we want to create a great in-room experience, but we're also understanding that our impact is much larger online. So things like a bright white wash, your vocal leaders are not going to like that it's just nothing but white wash all over the stage mm -hmm. as far as front light goes, but it looks really good on camera when you're able to throw enough light on somebody that they're seeing, that the camera can see them well. And um, so it's really just, I would say the biggest first step is to define what you want it to look like. Is your impact the in-room experience or is your impact online? For us, you know, we're reaching two, three times the amount of people online in a weekend that we are in a room. So although we want people in the room to be comfortable, it's we're, we're focused on and intentionally thinking about what the camera is seeing. Um, and then also at our main campus, LED wall, um, it's hard to go wrong. It's You can put graphics on it. You can make it look like set pieces for a message. It can transform into all kinds of videos for worship. So right. um, LED walls have really come a long way, I would say, in the in the look of what broadcast is, we would say today probably. So walk me through a Sunday. What are you looking for that like, oh, oh I need to tweak that? What are some of the things that problems that you're trying to solve on a weekend usually? Yeah, so um, I have like color shading corrected Sony monitors in front of house. So I'm getting the, our- Do you Ross, have a shading position? Yes, yeah, so we do do okay. shading. We have broadcast uh, Sony cameras at our main location. And so we have, it's actually usually a volunteer, believe it or not. Sometimes yep. it's a staff member, but we have several volunteers. We've uh, trained to read a vector scope and all that kind mm -hmm, of camera mm -hmm. world stuff. And so they're able to help me out by kind of shading everything and keeping everything pretty level. Um, but um, on a Sunday, I'm looking at multi views at front of house and um, looking I'm a lot of times looking at program and preview and thinking about or trying to guess where the director is going to go with camera shots to make sure whether it's a uh, worship leaders lit okay. or just having smooth transitions. smooth transitions are huge yes. um, especially with front light like if you're yes. you know if someone's not in the light but then they start speaking and you throw up a light real quick it's just trying to my biggest thing on a Sunday is trying to almost be one step ahead of where we're Good. going Good. so that yep. once the camera sees it it's already set and looks nice um, if that kind of makes sense. Absolutely I think you bring up a great point with transitions I think that's where a lot of churches go wrong or don't pay enough attention to not just in lighting but in uh, camera work and I mean the, the set list the worship leader worship leader getting to the pastor oh, like yeah. all of that is incredibly important even song to song oh yeah uh, I think can be it's almost cringe you know it's it's a little clunky oh yeah uh, sometimes so so maybe to speak to that how are you guys super intentional about making sure that it everything flows to each other. Yeah, we um, kind of the same way the, the video lighting um, relationship, we try to create some of the same relationship between the production team as a whole and the worship team. So that when we're in sound check, when we're talking through transitions, it's not just how's the band gonna make the transition feel right, yeah. but it's how is production also gonna make it feel right. So during sound check, we're listening, we're looking, we're hearing what they're saying, what they're thinking for their transitions. And then a lot of times um, I would say slow is best. So obviously mm -hmm. like we have a, countdown video that plays into our first song so i've got to get from countdown to the first song fairly quickly like fairly quickly i mean like four or five seconds because mm -hmm. i've got about a 120 moving lights and a 
you know, 400 tile LED wall. So it doing anything fast is a distraction. So right. as quick as we can make it without being distracting, we kind of have to get into the worship set. But then when we go from, let's say, you know, the first song to the second song and the second song to the third song, as we kind of make that transition from praise for our church at least, more to the worship side of the worship service. Mm -hmm. um, we're really trying to slow things down, um, small movements, slow movements, um, to really kind of help create an experience where we like to say, you know, people's attention is gonna be drawn to the brightest thing in the room, which brightest isn't necessarily intensity. It could be noise if there's feedback mm -hmm. or if a camera shot cuts out because we lost, you know, the SDI or something. Mm -hmm. So for us, the loudest thing, whatever the loudest mm -hmm. thing is, speaks. So we're trying to create an environment in which it's an excellent experience, but nothing is too loud compared to everything else. Right. Talk to me about uh, lighting volunteers. So you've mentioned that you know nearly everybody at the campus level mm -hmm. is a volunteer Correct, lighting. Yeah. How? Give me some tips on how you've built that team, and maybe for churches that are looking to grow their volunteer mm -hmm. team yeah. and base. How did you do that? So what we do is um, we have a system called Growth Track. That's our onboarding process into our church. So it starts out as a membership class, and then we actually go, it's a three-week class. The second and the third week, um, we actually do a lot of topics on leadership and like skills assessment and different assessment uh, tests like that. And uh, the first thing we try to do is help people figure out like why they're wired like why do they think what they think um, we're production guys but like we know at this point why we're wired the way we are there's a lot of people out there who have interests but they don't really know like why that interest interests them right so the first thing we actually try to do is help people learn why they're wired the way they're wired to then help them join a team so if that lines up that they might be good on a worship team or a production team at that point we kind of take them into our team and they go through a process we call development which is where um, once a week it gives the band a chance to rehearse the set for that upcoming Sunday but we're actually running full cameras lyrics shading all of that so that in a real world setting but not in a high stress setting of an right. actual service right. they're able to learn and grow and they can miss a lyric and it's not a big deal because yep. there's nobody in the room um, so we try to create again those kind of safe areas and ways for people to learn and experience a service without being in a um, high stress environment and I think that is incredibly important to yeah. provide those spaces where people mess up. I mean, if I were th thrown to the wolves and have to, you know, okay, what am I doing? Hit every cue right. Right. and not have those practice chances when nobody's in the room, right. non-stress, not on game day, Oh yeah, you know, uh, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, you can have you can have all the ability and technical know-how in the world, but stress is a paralyzer. So yeah. if you're stressed in a service, you'll get paralyzed and something will go wrong, even if you have all the know-how in the world. I mean, we've all experienced that. Yeah. So what we try to do is create an environment mm -hmm. where they can learn, they can build up that technical knowledge, and at the same time, kind of learn the ebbs and the flows of service and when the stressor moments are and how to handle them and things like that that. All right, so give me a parting shot here. What is one thing I can take back to my church and change my, the, the lighting game at my church? What's one thing that I can go go do this week that would really hit, help? Um, I think one thing that I would tell people if you were just going to go back and do one thing this week is um, I, I have been through this just like probably every other church tech out there. We go through seasons where we do what we do just because it's what we've done. And so I would encourage all of you go back this week with a fresh set of eyes, sit down and go through your, let's say, five highest priorities, whether that's that the lighting looks good on camera or that the worship in the room feels like a rock concert, whatever that is for you and your church and your ministry, sit down with your top five things and redefine why you're doing it, how you're doing it, and is there a way to do it better? We always like to say at Highlands that we're not going to question the vision, we're not going to question what we're trying to accomplish, but we can question anything about how we're going to get it done. So go back mm -hmm. and sit down and ask yourself why. Like really think about it. Why am I doing this? Is it just because I've been doing it? Or is it because it's helping us? Or maybe it's not hurting us, but it's not doing anything positive. Right. Um, and sit down and, and think about that. I like to do that. I like to come to conferences, like SALT Conference that we're at right now, and um, have a chance to see how others do it, how others are doing what they're doing, their day-to-day -day stuff, their weekend services, and go back and sit down and be like, why am I doing it the way I'm doing it? Is there right. anything I could be doing different? Right. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's one that I try to keep myself in the habit of doing pretty regularly. Yeah, I think that's a good point because like you guys prioritize the online, 
But there are churches that might that they might have different priorities, right? And I think that's okay. I don't think we should always look to a Highlands or Elevation or wherever and, and just want to replicate right. what they're doing. It's, right. It might not fit for that uh, for our local context. So I agree with that. Well, Griffin, thanks so much for your time, man. Really Absolutely, appreciate it. it was a blast. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would, so that you never miss an episode of the show. Just go to youtube.com slash 1230 media, all spelled out, to find and subscribe now. Click the alarm bell to be notified of all future episodes. You can subscribe at youtube.com slash 1230 media. That's all spelled out, youtube.com slash 1230 media. Hey guys, I'm hanging out with Brandon Creel. Brandon, you are an independent consultant uh, and you've done a workshop here at SALT all about rigging. Yes, that's uh, right. And so I want to talk to you about how to do that safely and how that relates to those who make Sunday happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're talking to tech guys, worship leaders, maybe that duties as a sign to help us with <laughs> rigging or hiring out yes. that, uh, that sort of thing. So kind of get me started here. What was your workshop about? So it's all about rigging and the title of the presentation was Safe by Accident. Okay. And the question is, do we know whether or not our rigging is safe? And if we don't know, are we just being safe by accident? And that's not okay. We're in a church market, we cannot have any accidents. Safety is on the forefront. Gotta do it right, gotta do it safe. So as we'll work through your, your workshop notes, but I got a quick story. So I was at a, a big multi-site church and we were hanging this, uh, we had a company come in and hang like screens over a, it was like a baptistry area okay. that we were cutting off and putting a, a screen over it. Mm -hmm. And they were doing it from the catwalk and trying to like hang it over and like reach out with wires and whatever, not safe at all. All of a sudden, the whole screen comes crashing oh, down, no. and we had like a we have like a baptismal pool under it, and the screen just cracked in two. It was just a horrible situation. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. Oh, but so that's, good. that's the that's kind of the worst case scenario. We don't want things falling on. No. Well, not worst case. Nobody got hurt, but we don't want things falling on people. We don't think want bad accidents like that to happen. So, talk to me about your your workshop content and how we can prevent stuff like that. Yeah. So th the forefront is, as I mentioned, it's are we doing it safely, and how do we know that it's safe. Yeah. And if we don't know that it's safe, and if we have doubt, we need to reach out to a professional who can come in and either give us the confidence that it is safe or tell us what those deficiencies are and how we can fix them so that the system can be safe. And a lot of that is really annual rigging and safety inspections. Good. So how do I know, what if I have no clue in this area, mm -hmm. I'm a church that's looking for an outside company to come in, what do I look for in that company to make sure that I'm getting a not only safe team that's going to hang things correctly, but provide that yearly maintenance or however Well, those are really that. two different things, okay. but I'll answer them both. So Shot is the first way to go. We're, we have offices around the globe, so wherever you are, we can help you. Uh, we're not the only ones out there. There's plenty of other ones. If you're looking for something a little closer, someone who's certified, someone who's done it before, someone who's qualified, has the experience, it's not about the cheapest price. It's not about somebody who's down the street. Right. Do they have the insurances? Do yeah. they have the This is not something at all to take the cheap route no. on. It's not, right? a, it's not about shortcuts. It's about right. getting it done so that at the end of the day, you have the confidence that everyone's safe so you can do what you need to do in church. Yep. Good. Not worry okay. and not pray. We don't need to pray for safety. Right. We need Good. to know it's safe. Okay. Good. So walk me through some of the things that you, maybe some stories of things that you guys have rigged. What, what can you rig in an auditorium? Like, what are we talking about? Well. As far as equipment goes. Yeah. So I want to just clarify one thing. So sure. we're, we're consultants. We're not rigging contractors. Right. We're not rigging suppliers. Okay. So, but, but with that, entertainment rigging is so broad. And yes. you might go into a church that has, all, their only rigging is a few speakers. Or you might go to like church, I went, I went down to the sanctuary here, they have rigging all different types, motors and speakers and lights and trusses and video walls. Mm -hmm. And so it's everything in between from barely anything to it's almost like you're at a concert. So you're consulting people to choose a good, safe rigging local team to 
to do the rigging. Is that right? Yeah, we, we do everything from budgeting to conceptual design okay. to even working with architects and engineers on infrastructure for buildings. Does the roof... Um, Can it withstand it? Yeah, does it have the capacity? If an engineer doesn't know that you might be doing entertainment rigging, they're not going to include that in their design. So we're an advocate for the owner, for the church, to make sure that it has it there. And then we really can work, walk the church all the way through from bidding to design documents to uh, gotcha. construction administration all the way through to the very end. So the churches that come to you, what are some of the problems that you normally solve for them? You walk through a couple of those, but maybe what are the questions that they're asking you? What are some of the things that you're telling them that they don't know? You know, I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. I'm trusting you. What yeah. are some of those things? Well, ch churches have a lot. Of, churches are kind of unique that some churches have full-time staff. Others, it's volunteer base. It's mm -hmm. part-time. Maybe people have day jobs, and it's not, it's not the entertainment or the tech side of things. So we get a variety of calls from churches and clients with a lot of different questions. It may be crazy ideas and they just want some help and guidance on is it safe, can we do it, how do we do it? Or it may be as simple as, well, we have a problem and something's not working quite right or something's stuck or it's making a funny noise, can you come in and take a look? Yeah. And, and because we're independent, we're not associated to any brand, mm -hmm. we're here just to provide you advice. And, and, and also, it might not just be called this rigging contractor, but it might be putting together a narrative on here's the scope of work for the contractors and they may bid on the work so you're getting competitive pricing. Good. Okay. So what are my first steps? If I go back to my church, the first, I guess the first step would be to call you guys and tell you, okay, here's what I'm thinking about. Here's, yeah. what, I'm, here's what we're dreaming up. Right. Is that right? Yeah. What, what, what's your problem or what are you trying to achieve or what is it that you're yeah. struggling with? Yeah. And, and we'll help you walk through that process. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, man, thank you so much for your time. Oh, really it's appreciate a pleasure. it. Brandon. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thanks Saw a lot. What a great conference, and we had a yeah. great time. Yeah, appreciate it. Great. The show notes for this episode are available now at makingsundayhappen.com. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out this week. You can find our show archive, all the goodies. You can subscribe. You can get all the archives of the show, every single episode, absolutely free. Just go to makingsundayhappen.com, makingsundayhappen.com. All right, next week on the show, one of my favorite people, my friend Jason Morris from Resi, will be in the house. Jason is the product development manager at Resi. Uh, they were huge in the pandemic. Uh, you know this. Uh, they were one of the most stable platforms out there. We highly recommended them uh, during the, the pandemic as a live streaming platform that really, really stood the test. Uh, and they are an amazing team of people and innovators. Uh, they help churches with uh, live streaming, uh, video on demand, uh, all of that good stuff. So uh, Jason will be here. We're going to be talking about uh, product development at Resi. We're going to talk about church innovation uh, and all that good stuff. So all that is next week with Jason. All right, go out there and create some incredible worship experiences at your church this weekend. I will catch you next week. Making Sunday Happen is a production of the Ministry of 1230 Media. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your church, visit makingsundayhappen.com. Thank <laughs> you.